Hi there. Another thing I don't like about my channel and uh, my thinking generally and what makes me dissatisfied with the, some of the or a lot of the information that I'm giving you is there seems to be a really big, big confusion uh, between hermeticism, as I might call it, and religiosity. And, um, or people have even gone so far as to say uh, left hand path versus right hand path. Um, but that has a bit of a, <laughs> a bit of a hammer house of horror connotation to it. So I'm not sure that's a very useful categorizing. Um, but anyway, religiosity. Um, I mean, the principal thing about religiosity is that you're waiting on the Holy Spirit. Um, you're waiting for a, a transcendental God uh, to intervene on a personal level through the action of Christ um, as a living, as a living bridge, if you like, uh, between the transcendental God uh, and the lower worlds, uh, this world, one might say. Um, and we're waiting for the Holy Spirit to do something for us, uh, with us, to us, or even against us. Um, you know, one thinks of uh, of a pricking of a conscience, a whistleblower, for example, um, reveals all about the actions of their government department or their pharmaceutical company. And, um, you know, so sort of a conscious, conscious, uh, a conscience, I might say, rises up and, and, you know, and one is taken over by that conscience and feel you have to act on that basis um, to do what is right and good and to serve truth. Uh, so one might even say that the Holy Spirit has an adversarial uh, um, action on some people. Um, and I guess it could be a little mixture of all of those categories uh, in various different combinations, depending on the individual's life situation and, and their particular spiritual needs, uh, which only uh, the Lord knows. Um, also, the Lord knows the contents of our hearts, the secrets of our hearts, and the Holy Spirit acts uh, either with you, for you, against you, or, uh, or um, to you. Uh, on the, on that basis, um, but of course we it could be that, that the Holy Spirit also, uh, or instead of acts in a in a way which is beyond our comprehension, uh, beyond any concept that we have. Um, it, it has a secret mode of action uh, on our lives and life situation, our consciousnesses, uh, which we don't, which we couldn't really analyze even if we wanted to. Um, and uh, to this end, I also add here that, you know, we may be looking at this in the wrong way around. We, we shouldn't be looking at the effects of the Holy Spirit, but rather on the uh, loving intention uh, behind what the Holy Spirit um, is perceived to do. Whereas, in fact, actually, it's not doing anything, uh, but we are perceiving various things that happen to us or with us or for us or against us. Um, and in these actions that have nothing to do with the Holy Spirit, uh, we are able to commune with the intention of the Holy Spirit um, as we perceive it to be, quote, acting, you know, in quotation marks. Um, be that as it may, um, waiting on the Holy Spirit, which is the key phrase here, the key phrase of, of religiosity, um, and I've sort of I don't mean an external religiosity of going to church and doing things like that. Although, you know, waiting on the Holy Spirit um, could be aided uh, by taking the Eucharist and meditating and praying and contemplating the scriptures. Um, you know, I'm not saying, but uh, but purely external religion, I don't really mean it. I mean where external religion interfaces uh, with an internal uh, spiritual um, growth, uh, which I think in modern churches now is 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 really what people are looking for. In fact, uh, the sort of interfacing between between uh, 
liturgy, for example, and internal uh, spiritual awakening. Um, at least I hope that is the case anyway. Um, but this is contrasted uh, to hermeticism. Uh, and I've identified sort of three modes here of hermeticism. Uh, one is uh, almost summoning the spirit uh, to do your will. Uh, I will to be spiritually enlightened and, and you're going to make it happen, Mr. Spirit. Uh, I, I, you know, it, it always seems to me this is kind of horrible, uh, summoning the spirit to do what you want, you know, uh, instead of leaving the spirit alone to do what it wants um, in connection with you. Uh, and this is what almost bordering really on black magic or sorcery or, you know, summoning spirits to do your bidding. Um, you know, which is a very, which seems always seemed to me to be disrespectful, uh, even of the goetic demons uh, that people want to want to give them. You know, they want these demons to give them love, luck, love, luck, and money. Um, and it and it seems to me, you know, well, why can't you do it yourself? Why can't you take charge of your own destiny, you maggot? <laughs> uh, and and why do you have to uh, imprison the spir uh, spirits or demons to do all these things for you? Uh, so, you know, what, what, you know, who are you to summon anybody or anything, really? That's what I'm saying. Uh, but perhaps we are uh, worthy of summoning. Uh, I don't know. Um, but then, of course, uh, you know, uh, there's this idea here of um, creating the sort of spiritual stuff within ourselves. Um, I suppose making ourselves worthy to summon spirits or, or call upon the Holy Spirit to do something for us. Um, you know, that might be part of the hermetic training, but also I have in mind here cre creating sort of spirituality within oneself as a result of various meditations and rituals and contemplations and talismanic talismans and, and I don't know, aromatherapy even, uh, you know, and a uh, sort of various regimens that we can go on uh, to sort of make ourselves to clean the lamps as it were, to make ourselves um, suitable uh, for the Holy Spirit to come into, suitable vessels sort of thing. Um, and, um, you know, so we are making ourselves, we're training the mind to become aware of the effects and the intentions of the Holy Spirit, to make ourselves become more sensitive uh, to identifying uh, the actions of the Holy Spirit. Um, and all this um, sort of various degrees of, of intervention by our, our will, for example. So we're willing this to happen. We're, we're, we're sitting down and getting down to it uh, and working on our minds to make ourselves more worthy or, or to make ourselves more sensitive um, or to make ourselves more powerful, if you like, in, in getting Jesus to do things for us, uh, which, which is a sort of kind of feels to me rather a dirty um sort of idea if you like really um so but i think that um you know it, there's a big confusion in my thinking between these two as i sort of i kind of hurl between uh these two pole polarities if you like you know on one hand there's the training of the mind uh and on the other hand there's the waiting for the holy spirit to act and communing with the loving and in, loving intention of the holy spirit uh, rather even than what the Holy Spirit does. So it doesn't do things for you. Uh, it's just uh, a, a sort of <clears throat> like a ball of gas into which you can step and, 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 bec and, and bask in the, in the, in the um, pleasure or the rasa, as the painters call it, of, of, the, of the presence of the Holy Spirit, not what it's actually doing. It's just, it's just being a presence within your life uh, at various times of need, for example. Um, so you're waiting on the Holy Spirit and you're waiting on, um, you're being totally passive. Uh, you know, it's not like you're not calling Jesus. Jesus is calling you. You're waiting for the phone call. Do you know what I mean? <clears throat> and then there's the other side where you're making the phone call and you're improving the quality of the phones and you're making yourself uh, you know, improving the electronics of the phone in order to uh, under, in order to become more sensitive to, to the messages that you might receive. Uh, so you agree, it's all quite a different uh, mode of operating. Um, and uh, you know, you, the objective of the training of the mind uh, has all these uh, various motives uh, in in 
in the back of your head, you know, I want to make myself worthy or powerful or uh, more sensitive and things like that. I want to improve the technology by which I communicate with God, um, which which basically it seems to be quite fairly blasphemous in a way because, you know, uh, God chooses or God can enter into the into the lower worlds through the Spirit, through Christ and through the Holy Spirit. Um, it really doesn't need you to do anything. Um, to You don't have to improve anything about yourself. Um, you are as you are or who you are. Um, and it's on that basis that the Holy Spirit um, makes itself uh, uh, makes itself known to you uh, throughout your life at various times of genuine need. Um, because, you know, you could go into the sort of, uh, into the mode of ego. Uh, you know, I, I know what's best for me kind of thing. Um, I know better what's best for me uh, than the Holy Spirit. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we sort of, we get into this kind of territory that, that the best prayers are the unanswered ones. Um, you know, that uh, you, you, you pray for something that you want, uh, but it might not be what you need. Do you know what I mean? So um, and the Holy Spirit knows what you need better than you do. Um, but as I say, even thinking about what the Spirit can do for you, or Holy Spirit can do for you, is it, missing the point as well. It doesn't do anything. It ju it's just there as a sort of sphere of beingness uh, into which you can um, enter. As you're right, but not enter through hermetic training, but just enter spontaneously, you know, as a little child sort of thing. Um, and uh, so I, I, in my videos, I don't seem to make it clear what I'm talking about. Am I talking about hermeticism or religiosity? Um, and I seem to be under the illusion that Gnosticism harmonizes or can harmonize uh, hermeticism with religiosity. Uh, and, and that's what I'm questioning. I, I'm not sure that it does harmonise. I'm not sure that it does combine the two uh, so-called left-hand and right-hand paths. I, I don't think the paths can be combined, uh, really. I think they are diametrically opposed uh, because we're talking about human will versus the will of God. Um, and um, But I suppose uh, recently I have made videos where I'm talking about a sort of Buddhist interpretation uh, where basically all the Semitic stuff uh, and religious stuff is really just a metaphor um, for entering into the here and now. Uh, and when you enter into the here and now properly, uh, that's when you, that's when you uh, sort of become like a, like a piece of tracing paper you know, and and uh, and you you you're able to trace over the image underneath the paper, uh, and and you pick the paper up, and there's the image. You see, uh, in the here and now. So the Holy Spirit is the is the paper is the image on the paper underneath the tracing paper, um, and you're tracing the lines out uh, by expanding your consciousness, uh, which you do in the here and now. Uh, so I suppose in that sense. Uh, it's possible that a modern Gnosticism uh, does harmonise uh, the hermetic path um, and the religious path, as one might call it. Um, and perhaps we're just splitting hairs anyway, that this is all basically comes under the general category of mysticism. Uh, and if I, if I was to tag this video, it would be kind of, I put mysticism as one of the tags, which, which speaks volumes really for the whole thing, doesn't it? Um, but uh, I, I am sometimes concerned uh, that one would go too much into hermeticism, to, which is which is what I've explained is is sort of lower worlds uh, in its roots. Uh, it, it may aspire to something higher than itself, but it its roots are in something much lower uh, than the thing uh, to which it aspires, um, and uh, so this is a problem. I th I feel. Um, but I suppose it's only a problem if you make it into a problem, uh, which I'm apt to, to do because I think far too much about everything uh, and instead of just, you know, chilling out and <laughs> going into the here and now, uh, which would be an answer to the whole of this and to the whole of this presentation indeed. 
Um, anyway, so um, I leave it at that uh, and um, hope that you make sense out of all this uh, during your spiritual practice or along your spiritual path.